That's because we need to make sure all four corners are down. I think this case is, is a little bit bent, so... Hi, I'm Javin and the founder of Angad Post and welcome to our little side video series where we like to call How to Build a Post Production House and this shall be our first episode. So although we have actually been in this office for about 10 months or so, I would still consider this as a work in progress because uh, most post production houses are usually a lot bigger than this, like they have multiple edit suites but in our case that this whole office is just basically one big edit suite. But there's another reason why we are doing this video and that's because we are doing a graphics card upgrade to this main machine over here, uh, which we will upgrade to a graphics card that can output HDR. So this main 4K monitor over here can actually display HDR but the graphics card cannot and that's why we are doing this upgrade. So before we do this upgrade, we are going to do some rendering test just to see if actually this graphics card can actually help in uh, making our render speed faster as well. So on to the test. So what we are going to do is to actually take uh, one of the projects that I've done before, uh, about 20 minute clip and we're going to convert it twice. Uh, once in H.264 and another in H.265 and we're going to be using uh, the NVIDIA uh, hardware rendering with CUDA on Adobe Media Encoder so we are going to run this test and later on when we install the new graphics card in we're going to see if uh, the speed are any faster so we let it render and so while all this is rendering uh, maybe we can also just show around the equipment that we have around here so over here is our uh, Mac, our M1 Mac Mini station, uh, which we'll probably mainly use it mainly for uh, secondary edits and maybe to uh, offset some of the transcoding work into this machine over here. And uh, yeah, it also has two monitors and this TV basically is an older TV, uh, 1080p TV that I had lying around and we just use it for you know if the clients need a bigger screen or something like that but it's not meant to be an accurate uh, output but it's just big enough for clients to see the big image but our main machine here is where the bulk of our work is done and it has three monitors uh, two of them from the basically the graphic the user interface of the editing software like Adobe Premiere, Avid or DaVinci Resolve and we have a client monitor here that is actually a, broad, a professional broadcast monitor and it's the TV Logic LVM232W it's only 1080 but it outputs color at uh, very accurately at uh, Rec 709 levels so that's why we uh, use it to show if you are clients if clients want to see their works with accuracy we tell them to look at this monitor over here and also beside this uh, if they need a big screen experience there's kind of a makeshift projector screen over here uh, which actually you just I just taped it uh, with duct tape and it's coming off this projector over here so this projector is actually the Lumos Oral projector and I've actually talked about it uh, in another side channel that I do yeah you can go and check that out I'll probably leave a link below yeah so uh, it's not going to be very color accurate I've even calibrated it and it still doesn't look anywhere close to the broadcast monitor but you know it's, it's basically a, a big screen uh, client viewing experience and so moving on to our uh, little networking gear over here so uh, right now for storage we are using a, a relatively small NAS it's the Synology DS920 and I have about maybe close to about 30 terabytes of storage on this thing it's probably good enough to handle like one or two feature length projects but uh, it's not going to be enough to handle from my experience it's not going to be enough to handle like bigger uh, TV series where you're going to need even more storage than this but it will do for now until we upgrade and right over here is actually uh, there's a Wi-Fi router over here but it's relatively uh, a relatively affordable one that I can afford for now but the what's below here is the more exciting piece of equipment which is the uh, 10 gigabit switch but uh, only two which but although it's only two ports they are 10 gigabit and uh, this will allow us to have as well as to be ready for a future uh, server that can handle 10 gigabit and we'll hook it up to one of the 10 gigabit ports here so right now the 10 gigabit ports actually hooked on to 
the Mac Mini. Yeah, basically this M1 Mac Mini is the currently the only equipment that is has 10 gig in it. But it's not being used as a server right now. But you know we are just getting ready for future 10 gigabit uh, connectivity uh, that will come soon. As we handle bigger projects uh, with higher bitrate cameras and where we have multiple editors working on the same project at once, that's where we need our bandwidth to basically be a lot larger. And maybe even this switch may not be enough as well. Well, we will do the upgrade uh, when the time comes. But I suppose right now this this little setup uh, is small, but you know it was gonna do it's gonna do for now. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention that I believe this is actually the most unique thing unique thing about my setup, which is this little speaker switch over here. So, as you can see right now, we have a very kind of a fairly basic five point one uh, playback system. So, uh, I have tr uh, left center for the left center right. I have uh, three small the three small speakers over here, and the front I have another left center right. Which is for, for which is more designed for the big screen viewing. So the, there's two switches over here, uh, the small LCR and the big LCR. So under not when I'm editing over here, I would just uh, basically uh, turn. I would just turn this on. But if let's say I have big clients, they want to view on a big screen, then I would turn this on. And but and if but if I want uh, so for stereo mixers, I will probably just keep. All of these, all of these speakers on. But if I want to have a more, uh, color ac uh, not color accurate, but uh, a more accurate uh, sound viewing experience, where I want to hear all the pans correctly, from that sofa over there, then I would uh, basically turn the small these these small ones off, so that all the left center right will basically, uh, play back from these three speakers. So the render's done. And so the transcode for the H264 took about 7 minutes and 15 seconds according to the log and the H265 encode took about 8 minutes and 25 seconds. So uh, let's do the upgrade now and see whether if this is any improvement or will show any improvement with the new graphics card. Okay, so now it is time for the up actual upgrade. So we're going to be removing the old card here which is actually the old Titan X Maxwell. It is, uh, I bought this card about seven years ago and it works pretty well. It has about 12, it has a 12 gigs of VRAM and it works pretty well for quite a long time but uh, in today's uh, workload it might be a little bit old and like I mentioned, uh, it does not output HDR to the monitor so I will not be able to see HDR content that my clients may sometimes require us to deliver. So we're just going to move that out. It's quite dusty. Eh? And so this is the replacement, which is the GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, how I got this uh, basically is because uh, uh, I, I just upgraded my personal rig to a RTX 3070. And this used to be sitting in my personal rig. When, so when I upgraded it, I decided, hey, you know, maybe this card can be used to upgrade uh, this machine in the office here. And some of you might ask, uh, why not bring the 3070 into this machine instead? Since it's a more, it's a newer and more powerful card. Well, there's a reason for it. Uh, for me, it's because uh, the 1080 Ti has more VRAM. And when you are working uh, on a professional, uh, for gaming, you don't need a lot of VRAM. Uh, unless you are running like, very high textures, but when you are doing uh, actual creative work, uh, especially with like DaVinci Resolve, you will need the extra RAM and sometimes not enough RAM will like, cause your software to crash. Or in the case of DaVinci Resolve, you get errors uh, like uh, not enough RAM or that kind of thing. And uh, I've actually uh, worked on some uh, many post-production hours before I set up my company and actually a lot of them are running 1080 Ti's. So uh, it seems to work really well. So I think it might still work uh, until the ne our next upgrade. Also, oh sorry, uh, before I, I almost forgot to mention. So before we actually close the case, actually some people might be wondering what is this little card over here. So this is actually uh, what in the video world we call an I.O. card or an input output card and in this case is the Blackmagic Deckling uh, mini monitor 4K. So 
what is the use of such a card uh, is because we want to get very accurate uh, input and output because when you output it from the main graphics card the out color and the frame rate will be influenced by the OS by the operating system so you may not be getting the proper RGB or YOV colors that will be outputted in the final uh, final playback system so and the frame rate that you're seeing let's say I'm doing uh, 50 frames per second uh, and but the monitor is uploading at 60 hertz and uh, so basically what you're seeing is basically 50 hertz and 50 frames per second adapted into a 60 hertz monitor and which may be not be very accurate so we, that's why we need this to output to the broadcast monitor where you will get the actual color space and the correct frame rate that is outputting uh, usually when you're editing for youtube you don't really need a card like this but when you're doing a post-production house where you're dealing with many kinds of formats and frame rates and clients want to be able to see exactly what they are getting then uh, a card like this is very it's a must for any post-production house even if it's a, a relatively cheap one like this one so now it's time to close this case slot right here close it it's getting a bit because you need to Make sure all four corners are down. I think this case is, is a little bit bent, so it's gonna take a bit to push it back in. I think that should do the job. So uh, actually, uh, I, I even mentioned it, but actually this machine is using uh, AMD Ryzen 7 5700 G, which is a eight core, sixteen track processor and it has 64 gigs of RAM which is going to be plenty for uh, many high-end projects that we do and so let's put this thing back under the desk and let's run those render tests again so the encode's done and so let's take a look at the results so the H.264 conversion actually took about 6 minutes and 39 seconds but, and the H265 encode took about six, 6 minutes to 28 seconds. So actually, uh, it seems that there's a, a lot larger improvement when it comes to the H265 encoding, which is actually pretty interesting to see. Now, so we all know, uh, since we now know that uh, we actually upgraded the graphics card so that we can output HDR, so let's test that. So we go to our control panel. So let's go... So you see here that uh, it says uh, H Windows HD color. So let's enable that. And you might notice, hey, this looks very desaturated. So actually, what happens is that you read the, for this monitor, yeah, uh, basically the Acer CBL two eight two K needs uh, basically needs to your monitor to be actually set to HDR mode, which I'm going to do right now. So you need to go to yeah, mode HDR and now it looks really bright so let me just lower now my exposure so you can actually see how bright it really actually is and uh, here's the thing also uh, this the problem with uh, this HDR on this monitor is that when you're in HDR mode uh, let me just set the focus you you actually can't adjust the colors uh, so let's say if we were to exit this, let's switch it back to HDR off again. So I will switch this uh, the mode back to the user mode, which is the mode that I actually have my color calibrated. So just to let you see what my calibration is, because this monitor the color isn't really good out the box, and through my calibration, I've actually figured out uh, these are the set, these are the RGB gain values that actually provide the most balanced uh, output and this is in comparison to the broadcast monitor yeah so that means uh, on this monitor yes although HDR monitoring is available uh, the sad news is that uh, I can't view uh, the I can't view it uh, the HDR with color calibration so uh, I, I guess it will give a quick it will give clients a quick view of what the HDR version is going to look like in terms of brightness but not in terms of color accuracy so for color accuracy I guess we're going to have to invest in a uh, 4k HDR capable broadcast monitor um, if we once that once we have the budget but uh, those can cost easily 
uh, tens of thousands of dollars, which is not something that we can afford now. So that we have to wait. But until then, this is the HDR content that we're able to deliver for now. You know, at least we can monitor it, but obviously we hope to be able to upgrade it uh, and, you know, to able to see uh, more accurate HDR color reproduction. And so that's going to do it for this very first episode of how to build a post-production house. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to engage us on projects, do check out our website on gutpost.com and click on the contact button. And until next time, or until maybe we do a second episode of how to build a post-production house, thanks for watching.